All right, so before, um, before I go into the, the next section, I'm going to race... Uh, I'm going to erase this and we'll just go through, draw it really quick um, so that you really get an understanding of sort of the, the logical relationship between each part. I'm going to erase critical kind of thinking. Uh, so we're going to get rid of everything. And what I would get in the habit of doing, um, because practice makes perfect, for sure, especially when you're talking about uh, logic, logical analysis, because in a little bit what we're going to do is we're going to take these concepts and we're going to um, we're going to make we're going to complicate it. Right? We started off very very simple with a, a claim like all humans are mortal. Um, we complicated it a little bit by talking about relationships, but what we're going to end up doing is it's very quickly going to become mathematical, and not only just mathematical, but very complex. Lee mathematical. Before we do that, I just want you to be comfortable in um, in understanding this. So this next bit is extremely non-traditional, but I think it's important, right? You have four colors. You have a green. You have blue. You have red. You have red. You have black. Just like we had, we know what each size represents. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want you to recognize that it's not about the math, right? It's not about logic, it's about relations. Critical thinking isn't about anything but identifying relationships. We recognize the positions of each of these colors. So though this makes absolutely no sense, it's for those of you who have taken the LSAT or studied for the LSAT, if you know what a hypothetical syllogism is, for example, if A then B, if B then C, therefore, if A then C, you can recognize that something like this this has meaning. This has meaning. It might not you might not think it has meaning, but it preserves the, the form of hypothetical syllogism. If people are only wedded to memorizing sort of hypothetical syllogism in this form, not really understanding the significance and the meaning of each position, then you're really not going to be able to do sort of higher order complex mathematical logic. Not that we're going to do that in this video series, but I want you to recognize that we're not wedded to this. My, my teaching style isn't wedded to this. I'm more interested in this, that you recognize the relationships, right? So what I want to do in this is get rid of everything that I just said and just, just to drive home the point, regurgitate it from memory, right? Okay? Well, we know that we're going to divide the board. There's going to be a top half. There's going to be a bottom half. We know that we're going to have cross relationships here, cross relationships here, horizontal relationships on the top and the bottom. So we just do that. Straight memory, right? No notes, just off the top of your head. We remember, start with the easy one, we remember that we had um, contrary relationships on the top, sub contrary relationships on the bottom. So we'll do that. Contraries on the top, sub contraries, if I can spell C O C U B C O N T R A. Sub contraries, and this is practice, this is how you practice, right? Contraries on the top, sub contraries on the bottom. We remember that this relationship going top down is known as a super uh, alternation, A L T E R N A T I O N, super alternation. We remember that the middle is for contradictories. Remember that the middle is contradictories. Top, with respect to top down, is um, uh, some alternate, super alternate. Bottom is sub alternate. Right? Top is super alternate. Bottom is sub alternate. And now we can talk about relationships, right? 
the relationship between green and black is a contradictory relationship. The relationship between black and green is contradictory. The relationship between black and blue, black is in a subaltern relationship to blue. Blue is in a super altern relationship to black. Blue and red are in contradictory relationships. Red and blue are in contradictory relationships. Red is in a subaltern relationship to green. Green is in a super altern relationship to red. Right? If you wanted to get, um, if you wanted to get really sort of fancy, but this would require more practice on your part, we would say that the relationship between I'm just going to abbreviate green and black, G, green and black, right? We would say that one can be true, the other can be false, that's fine. Both cannot be true, and both cannot be false. Just sort of commit that to memory. The relationship between green and blue, I mean, uh, green and black, blue and red as well and red and blue. So we know that structure, right? Just commit it to memory. All right? Top, relationship between green and blue, right? Contrary relationship. Contrary relationships, both can be false. False, false is okay. True, true is not. Subcontrary relationships. True, true is okay. False, false is not for subcontrary relationships. So the relationship here between green and blue, or blue and green, and a relationship here between red and black, and black and red. You can see what I did, and let me just make sure that I got all of that right. <laughs> um, Subalternation, sorry. Subalternation, SUB. Subalternation, I think that's the only thing I got wrong. Relationships, we got correct. Um, boom, 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 boom. That's right. Contraries. Both false, not true. That's right. Subcontraries. That's right. Yeah. So, only thing was it's subalternation. I gotta remember that. That's, but you get the idea, right? Practice. Just practice. It doesn't really make sense. None of this makes sense. It's like the image that I showed you for the hypothetical syllogism. But it's not about it making sense. It's not about it conforming to some book or some practice that somebody told you the way, the proper way you're supposed to do logic. It's not about that. That's not what critical thinking is about. Critical thinking is about putting yourself in a position where you can mess up and call it super alternation rather than subalternation, right? It's about reconstructing this so that you recognize the relationship that's important. That's what's important. And then with practice, you can just memorize the truth functions of uh, the, these relationships, but that's something that, you know, is going to take uh, not years of practice, you know, a couple weeks of practice, you, you'll, you'll memorize you'll memorize the relationships. What's important here, and what I wanted to demonstrate here, is what critical thinking really is, right? It's just recognizing the relationships between things. How are these two things connected? Right? Blue and black, I mean, uh, um, green and black, are in contradictory relationships to each other? Well, with respect to the discussion that we just had, yeah, right? If you can get what I'm doing now, then you recognize you're really going to start to understand um, how we can really, uh, in a second, complicate uh, the discussion, right? Because what hopefully that was a demonstration of is the flexibility that you have in critical thinking. There is limitless, endless flexibility in critical thinking, um, which is why I'm not wedded to any particular discipline, right? Uh, I want you to liberate yourself really from that conception. Two points. I've incorporated this into this series only because I need it in order to develop we're going to get really mathematically technical in a second, and you won't be surprised that you'll make sense of this. You'll understand this. I promise you, you'll understand it if you're following along in the series, but it's not going to be a game, right? I've never seen what I'm about to write in any textbook. It's not a copy and paste of somebody else's work. It's original. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but it's originally my thought, and it's very, very complex, but you'll be able to understand it critically if you just understood that sort of color scheme that we did. It doesn't seem like it was good, but I know it was good for your brain. So I, this next point, uh, the two classes of universal propositions I have in my Venn Diagrams lecture. Um, if you watch the lecture, this is going to be a little bit redundant. I'm going to go through this sort of quickly, right? So there's two classes of universal propositions, right? I'll just put two classes. Okay, first, um, the A proposition. 